Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black from No Export For You. A few of you may have seen my blind live stream of the Fukan no Grasesta trial, or seen his replay. This series will largely be that live stream, broken up into more watchable segments. However, since the replay only captured the first 12 of the 13 hour marathon, I'll have to record the last few scenes again. Probably better than before, since it will be neither blind nor live. So that's what this series will be. This particular video will cover some popular settings, the trial introduction, and the first scene of the game. Enjoy. Let's get this started. So this is going to be Fu Kan no Grasesta. And here's the good news, you can listen to The Sound of Happiness. Always good for what ails you. Well, here it is. I'm going to start by going into the options. I've been through the options pages and I basically know what's going on. Oh yes. Let me know if you can't hear the clicking sounds when I click the mouse. Right click. I also have a... I also have a holding, dragging sound, like so. And every so often, I have a reminder that goes ding to make sure to check the chat. Although, if there's only one watching, that's probably me. So, I'm speaking to the, all the internet and it's me talking to myself. Now these settings. I wanted to show the full name of characters because I want to know their full names. Mm hmm. Yeah, the rest of this is normal. Interestingly, I guess if you have a lag, you can turn it down to 30 frames per second in the dungeon. Here you can check out the voice characters, uh, the character voices. There are little snippets here. Hmm. Oh yes, there's something here that always annoys me. These two here. These will automatically move your mouse cursor to selections whenever a selection pops up. I can't stand that, so I skip it. Now, curiously, Yoshuli has this gamepad input all mapped out. Hmm. I could have sworn when I tried this before that it was locked. I know. I can switch things around now because I actually plugged in a controller. Back in... When I was testing out this game the first time, I didn't have a controller plugged in, so all of these were, the color of this, disabled. It does recommend somewhere. I think it's here. If you're going to be using a gamepad, be sure to plug it in before the game starts. Just one of those things. This is one interesting option. If you have it on that option, it comes up gamepad style. If you have that option, it comes up keyboard style. Maybe I'll be using the gamepad, or maybe I won't. Yoshi Lee games have always been mouse games, in my experience. But hell, you never know. So, without further ado, let's start this game. Yeah, the tutorial on or off? Let's leave it on. I'll probably skip it. Mm, well, no, I don't know what's going in, so I won't skip it. And you can say, gamepad or mouse. Yeah, I don't know if that does anything. I have a gamepad plugged in, just in case, but... I've always got my mouse. It served me well. Hmm. She's thanking us for getting the trial version of Fukan no Grasesca. And she is the Rustine. She's the leader of the Rustine house, Lilika. Game no Jovan will play through the Kotoga de Kirio in a famous. 
so you can play a preview of the game. ですが、内容は開発中のものとなりますので、製品版と異なる場合があります。あらかじめご了承ください。But the contents are still in, still in、uh, production, so it may differ from the final version. Please take care. それでは、体験版本編を開始させていただきますが、準備はよろしいですか So then, we're, we're going to start the trial version. Is everything ready? Ooh, I could have sworn I turned that off. Hmm. You see, it moved my mouse cursor for me, and I can't stand that. Normally, you can get to the settings from、um, anywhere. Oh, there it is. Duh. Look at that! I turned those both off, did I not? Hmm. All right. So, begin. Wakarimashita. Dewa, Taiken Ban Honten will Kaisi Sase de Tadakimas. Mata, Taiken Ban no Wari de Oai Shimasha. She says, Understood. Now then, we will begin the trial version. I'll see you again at the end. Hmm. I. I kinda like this girl already. Well, I guess she's the main heroine after all. If I didn't like her, this game would have a problem. Hmm. Raoul Bash Tairik, Seho Hokubu, Ustone Kokok. Konotini Sonzai Sulu Kekok Deva, Belgarado Okok, Telfion Lempo. 両国における争いがたびたび行われていた。Okay, in this particular area of the Ralbas Ralbas continent, you've got the Belgarad Kingdom and the Kilfion Alliance, and they have wars from time to time. かつては両国における要衝の地として認識されており、祭事に合わせての軍事行動である歴史を持つ戦として。So these two have a history, and well. 現在に至っては、その風習の名残から、祭事に対し、花を添えるための遠征が争いの種となっていた。So because they're into this habit, again they're repeating the cycle of war. ベルガラード王国がこの地、ウストーヌ渓谷を治める中。テルフィオン連邦が侵攻する形で行われることとなった第十三次ウストーヌ渓谷戦。Oh great! So Belgarado is trying to take the Uston Valley, and t e l f i o n is trying to take it back. And this is the thirteenth Uston Valley War. 王国より派遣されたザルドネ隊は渓谷にある砦の守備につき嵐の中で侵攻を続ける連邦所属愛用騎士団の攻撃を耐え忍ぶ。So against the Zaldone、uh, we'll call them army sent by the kingdom in the valley there was a battle against the Well, they were defending the valley, and like a storm, the attack came from the Federation. I called it an alliance, didn't I? Whatever it is. The army that came down for that is the Indigo Falcon Knights. The army that came down for that is the Indigo Falcon Knights. The army that came down for that is the Indigo Falcon Knights. 一個正体を率いて動き始めていた。So the kingdom's troops、um, trying to trying to claim an opportunity to その際にはこの戦いのために雇われた騎士団の所属ではない男が一人身を寄せている。So in this battle. There happens to be a knight who was 
hired to do it. A man. This man's name was Jedal Shuvalka. But at this time, how this battle would affect that man's fate and the future of one country was known to no one. Well, well, well. <laughs> A manly woman knight. Yuck, yuck, yuck. So if you want to guess what she's saying, she's talking about attacking and not letting up, etc. Yeah. Uh. All right, glory for our Tilafion alliance. Oh, great, guys. You're really important because you call out those sorts of things. So some hundreds or thousands of soldiers raise up a cry and charge into the valley. No, for a second I didn't know he was in the foreground. That was stupid. Oh, or rather, it would be stupid big of him to be on the same level as the other guy. So, those guys on the other side of the valley are crying out and easy. And they're heard. And they are heard as far as, well, these two. The leader of this particular battalion is... Yutorbe. He narrows his eyes oh, as he yeah. looks. Ah, uh, name. Yutore Heat. He says that our battalion is, seems to be surrounded by the enemy. If it goes on like this, we're going to be defeated. Uh, so, as expected of the Tilfion Alliance's famed Feshunel General, or rather, General Feshunel. That must have been the woman's name. So, even in this pouring rain, they can so valiantly charge our fortress. This isn't the time to be speaking so nonky. Lightheartedly. There we go. Ah, and the main character is speaking for once. Jirel Shrivalka. So over there is your commander. Is it alright to be splitting up our forces like this? So I guess this is Jadal's internal dialogue. He's saying, I am part of the Zaldoni company of the Balgarar Kingdom Army, participating as one mercenary. Hey. So our enemy is the neighboring country's Tilfion Alliance, etc. etc. This sort of thing happens kind of periodically. So as a mercenary, Yutore is also 
leading a particular little battalion. But for whatever reason, he and I are apart from the battleground at the moment. No He's saying there isn't a problem. No matter how vigorous and defiant the enemy may be, it's not so simple to take a fortress. So just withstanding what they're doing isn't a victory, but we won't imme lose immediately either. Yeah. So when a fortress is attacked, it's said that, or rather, it all thinks that the battleground becomes less favorable. So this fortress that was built to secure the valley, being attacked this badly, it seems like our chances of winning are actually kind of slim, but... So that means now is the time for us to move, is it? Exactly. Hmm. That was my first chat check, and apparently nobody's watching, nobody's chatting. For me. Anyway, he says. Exactly. All of us are going to go and... Even if... Okay, because we can't win even if we just protect the fortress. So we just run in there to save them. The meaning is kind of, uh, there's only slight meaning to it. In order to grasp victory in this battle, we've got to f perform our duties properly. Eh, if you're going to say so much, if you're going to say it so forcefully, I guess I'll do it. So, in the valley, the sight range is kind of limited. We can tell our enemies are at the fortress, but bad luck, our reconnaissance can't really get much out. Even if we send them out, we can't really get a good grasp of what's going on. Ah, tactics. The problem is what we, being uh, taking a separate role in this operation, need to do. Eh. So, our enemies are the attackers, and we are the defenders drawn into our fortress. So they have about three times as many people as we. In terms of direct firepower, they're higher. They've got the higher hand. They've got the uh, high ground. I could say that better, but whatever. And furthermore, it seems the reinforcements won't come in time. Alright, even confirming the situation, it's a pretty desperate battle lab circumstance. So being nighttime and under rain, but it's really night, Yuma. It's near nighttime. 
Normally this would be advantageous for the defender, but still. Hmm. Question, why are they attacking when the defender has all the advantages? Are they just that crazy or just that good? <clears throat> anyway, that's speculation. Anyway, this is a pretty bitter battle to be facing, but Yutori happens, seems to be enjoying himself. <laughs> Always. So, for the purpose of this defense, what do you think it is that we should do? <laughs> uh, foodstuffs, right? What? Uh, correct. No matter how powerful the soldiers are, since they're living creatures and all, if they don't have something to eat, they can't fight. Uh, logistics, huh? So with an army of that size gathered together, their expenses and particularly their provisions must have weak points, or rather, they have to make certain provisions in order to get provisions to their troops. So they can't do this for extended periods of time. And, well, providing for them for an extended period of time is very difficult. And, they must know that, and that's why they're in a hurry to win. Well, that's an interesting um, series of facts. And normally, the Alliance would be a little bit more capable. I mean, no matter how much their battle power is excessive, no, no matter how much their battle power is respected and ferocious, here with the Cat Sea, and furthermore, when the rain is following, having their troops go on and attack is, well, a bit reckless, as you told her, says. I'm gonna call him Yutre. Anyway. So the enemy's objectives are to steal the foodstuffs in the fort. Fortress. It's normal to consider that. Probably. They're taking the fort this time in order to... Well, they're trying to take the fort before their foodstuffs run out. Well, but... This is a war that's been repeated between the two countries... ...regularly. They probably, uh, they know what's going on and how this thing needs to go forward, right? So there's something included in the way he's saying it. <laughs> Though he's got that evil grin. Ah, well, I wouldn't call it an evil grin so much as a cocky grin. 
So, he thinks he's got a, the enemy all figured out. So, if we've got the situation uh, understood, it's troublesome to keep on talking. So, let's do this. Oh, yeah? <laughs> so, I'm the one who's employing you. You should be smiling as you interact with me. Yeah, Jadel seems to be a bitter type, doesn't he? Is that so? In that case, from now on, write that in the contract. And so, if so, if mercenaries don't get their contract money, they don't even want to talk, do they? Yeah. So the reason why Tilfion Alliance is attacking is a certain circumstance is related to a certain stance, at least so it is said. Let's see. They're trying to extend a... No, they're trying to extend an anniversary for the building of a temple. Strange. What, they just have a war to celebrate? Well, whatever. To be quite honest, I'm getting tired of translating this. It's kind of dull. I want to see some action. Is that too much to ask? Anyway, the problem is... It's connected to this uh, given day, and that's why they're attacking. Eh, well, they've got it all coordinated, do they? And then a hurry to take the fortress. So the Tupion Alliance is on in a hurry to get some results before the day in question. And that's why they're trying to force themselves into this battle, even though it's in unfavorable circumstances. Yeah, and then furthermore, there's their provision problem. Then again, we're on the same boat. As long as the fortress is surrounded, reinforcements can't come. And if our provisions inside run out, we won't be able to fight either. Well, that would suck. Two armies in the same place and unable to fight. Heh. <laughs> so it's either a fighting game where you fight to get a bunch of provisions, or it's a waiting game in which you both wait for the other to hopefully run out before you. So yeah. So that's why our enemy is first trying to get <clears throat> is trying to crush the defenders. They're trying to cut off our retreat and isolate us. So that's why you're saying that reinforcements won't come. So on a night like this, when the weather is the worst, they are attacking. It's an odd... It's an odd 
battle plan. Almost as if they've already got us surrounded. And if that's true, they just have to wait until our endurances run out. But the Tilfion Alliance is rushing the conclusion. And that's why they're in danger too. <laughs> they're trying to surround the fortress in order to in order to deliver us the, the situation we most fear. So, Yutre, hearing that speculation, again does that cocky smirk of his. So, since the fortress is occupied by us, the Belgorod Kingdom has the... Oh, nuts. Choten. It's a deployment. It's a deployment kind of staging ground. And since they have this staging ground, they have these. It's connected to them having the staging ground. How about that? So, there's no way we can lose, or rather the situation is so bad we can't, mustn't lose. And now, with our allies being, def being, uh, being fought off, huh. Jedal is thinking to himself, how can you throw a smile like he does? So, since they're in a, war, a hurry to win, they're trying to surround us and get us afraid in order that we should declare a surrender. So the reason why they're accelerating, why they won't let up, is in order to break our spirit. So it's a psychological warfare kind of thing, kind of deal. They do have the manpower to do it, and they're trying to force a short battle. So their selection attack is to take this fort. Now we're kind of piled all up into this one offensive. And so as long as they're assaulting the fortress, we won't be able to get reinforcements. Yeah. It, Rather, since we happen to be surrounded like this, we don't even know if there could be reinforcements headed our way. In this situation where our chances of winning are slight, It's difficult to keep your spirits up for a very long. We don't know when the enemy is going to make it inside of the fort. So you're also fighting against fear here. Hmm. 
so the soldiers aren't pawns on a boat. My intuition tells me that's some kind of Japanese saying that I don't fully understand. Anyway. Hmm. Ages and techniques are different. And you also get injured. Hmm. What is he talking about? So as you get injured and your fighting spirit starts to go down, these kind of one-sided one decisions start to become possible. <laughs> a battle to plan to break our spirit. That's a good way of saying it. So we're being attacked, the fortress is surrounded, reinforcements won't come, and we don't have a lot of provisions, they'll run out eventually. It's like they're saying to us, you can't, they're trying to force us to say that we can't win. So it's not just the commanders. Even the soldiers have an understanding of what's going on, being surrounded. So they've got it pretty well planned out. The actions they've decided to take are all for the purpose of getting the fortress to fall. But because they're so committed to this battle plan, and because they've got so much worked into their um, worked into their emplacements and such, the way they're constituted is easy to read. So with that, we are going to smash the enemies. Mm. I think it's heavy carts. So it'll be easy. And the battle will flip in our favor. Once they've lost their provisions, again on the heavy carts, then perhaps the enemy's general... Oh, what kind of face will the enemy's general show us? Hmm. Yutre's kind of cocky and... Maybe a bit cruel. I think it's kind of funny, though. I have a feeling I'm gonna like him. So, because Yutre is able to read the situation this well, he's got command of a small number of troops like he does. Normally, we'd think of this as being immediately before the fortress falls. But the enemy has left the back portions. The... I guess we're doing a flanking maneuver. After a fashion, going after their supply lines. So by taking the provisions of the side that's attacking the fortress, we can bring this battle to an end. 
視聴隊とはいえ敵軍の力量は確かだだからこそ君を連れてきた But even the heavy cards do have an appropriate amount of armaments, soldiers guarding them. Because of that, I brought you along. He said that. So the few in the elite, a single person. Who can overwhelm a good number of soldiers? You. He's speaking to a Jedal here. Huh. Is that so? Okay. Sounds like it was what it looked like. Yutre and Jedal are outside the fortress <laughs> as the enemies are attacking. Okay, a bit of backstory on Jedal, I guess. Let's see. He came from a poor town. And in order to live, he had to become strong. There was no other way to survive. So, even monsters... So even in... So he trained in order to be de trained hard enough that he could defeat even monsters. And Yutre at one point laid eyes on him and his abilities. And so he paid a very good price in order to bring Jedal along into his little company of troops. Oh, good. It's not long. So, did you try to hire Jadal when he was looking like that picture a minute ago, or did he do it lately? Well, because he says, I hired you in order to win this. I won't forgive you if you betray my expectations. Alright. I plan to earn the money that I've been paid. Whether that's enough to win or not is up to you. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the spirit. I'm not worried. So Ikida. Shinpai was staying at you. Kimi wa ichido hikyuke ta koto wa yari toyer. Alright. For some reason, I understood that better when he said it than when I was reading it a moment later. So he's saying. He's not worried. Once you've decided to take something up, you will fulfill it. <laughs> so, he has the blood of the famed warrior clan, Rovari, and He's spoken of as the man who destroyed, single-handedly, a certain bandit gang. And we'd like to see a reenactment here. That was because they didn't fo they didn't uphold their contract. Oh, this is good. Apparently he contracted with a bandit gang. The bandit gang broke the contract with Jadal and Jadal wiped them out. Badass. Well, you reap what you sow, they say. 
<laughs> Even after gaining such a wonderful battle power, that's a foolish decision to make. Well, after, yes, after getting that kind of battle power, that's a foolish decision. So, I'll be careful myself, too. There is no going back on a promise I've made. Because you hold that kind of... Because you hold that kind of ideal in your heart. That's why I decided to take you up here. Hmm. You three is pretty smart. Yeah. He kind of gets on Javel's nerves, though. Uh, one thing after another, it just annoys him, it says. If you don't have an immediate use, you really ought to cut him loose. Don't forget this. Once I've earned my pay, I'm leaving your company. Now, of course, I remember that. And so, in order to keep you from returning to your home, your hometown, I've somehow got to charm you into staying with me. You know, when I saw this guy in the you know, they've got a web page for the game and everything. He's among the characters they showcased. And you know, I took one to look at him and like, is this some gay guy who's going to be hitting on the main character the entire game? And here we are, first scene. Sounds kind of like it. So, Jarrell makes like he's ignoring him. And the, the enemy force that we've been expecting is spotted. Whoops. So where you expected there where you expected them to be, there's a company. It seems like it's the heavy carts. So okay. それじゃあ、蹂躙しよう。どうせなら派手に火でもつけようじゃないか。幸い、油ならたくさん用意しているんだ。Is that so? In that case, let's run over them. Let's get flashy and set them on fire. Unfortunately, I've set some oil aside for it. Hmm, I don't know, fire is a bad choice on a day this rainy. A night this rainy, I should say. Well, that's fortunate. You're a bit too prepared. But I actually doubt that you are actually planning this from the beginning. Hmm. Oh, here's Jalal saying to himself, since it's raining like this, having the oil would does make it more does make it more convenient to try and light things on fire. So this guy is pretty cruel. I'm preferring to think of him as having it all planned out. Okay, I'm going to confirm this. Even though these provisions are important, it's okay for us not to just steal them. It's not necessary. What's important here is to let them know that they don't have any food. And 
相手に取り返す可能性を感じさせ希望を持たせてはいけない So that's when the opportunity is going to come to us. The opportunity that was stolen at the beginning. What with the surrounding of the fort. So, in order to take back the high hand, the、uh, advantage in the battle, and get the. Them to lose their hope. <laughs> Understood. I'm going to commence attacking them. Oh, good. One thing that deserves saying is the other guy of this game is pretty cool. Definitely unlike d e t e l m the drug addict and Kaito the mama's boy, more toward the attitude of Regnar and Drandros Vasgan. Interesting characters to have around, entertaining in their own right, and having their own agendas rather than following the main character around like complete dopes. Here in the opening scene, y u t r e has made a stronger impression than Jedal, that's for sure. Next time, we'll watch as I fumble around figuring out the controls in the first game map. <laughs>